building a super tall, uh, high-rise uh, commercial office building directly adjacent to Grand Central Station. It's located between 42nd and 43rd Street, between Madison and Vanderbilt Avenue. The overall height of the building will be 1,401 feet to the tip of the spire. So we started demolition on this site in 2015 uh, and completed in the uh, summer of 2016. We're next to Grand Central where 750,000 people funnel through every day. It ended up being the biggest demolition uh, in all of Manhattan. It took us some 14 to 16 months uh, to bring it down to grade. Uh, foundation work was very complicated on this job. Uh, we had to do a lot of underpinning and supporting of MTA structures in order to do our foundations. We dug about 50 uh, feet of rock out. It took a year. And then the foundation process itself was done in May of 2017. Uh, largest concrete pour in New York City, 4,400 cubic yards, continuous pour, 27 straight hours. And we started structural steel. We're anticipating by the end of the year to have erection complete. Something that's important to show you that we're very proud of is something that we developed, the Severed Associates, in the late 60s and early 70s where the steel frame precedes the concrete pour which follows. As we go down a few floors, we'll see how the reinforcing bar is added to it, how the formwork is added to it, and eventually this will be a concrete shear wall. We're down a couple of floors, and what you see behind me here is the climbing form system. These, this system is attached rigidly to the columns on, on a climbing system. The, the white is the inside formwork of the concrete shear walls. You see the dowels here, which are the, the reinforcing bar that's coming up from the pour on the floors below. And the way this works is as they pour a floor, they take the front forms off, and this mechanism climbs one more floor with those white boards, which remain as the form for the inside of the concrete core. As you can see, this is the final product, the concrete shear wall. What they do is they take the exterior forms off, then they release the interior forms, and they jack the climbing form system up to the next level and continue and repeat the process. Steel first, rebar, and interior formwork second, exterior formwork, pour the wall, repeat. We have a cycle of four days per floor, so we place the slabs on metal deck ahead of the core, and that allows us to load rebar for the core concrete, and our core concrete operation is about two to three floors right below us. We have the ironworker operation above us, so we try and maintain that balance of four to five floors between the two. We also have all sorts of protection uh, platforms and, and uh, gratings so that we're able to function under here. The building tapers. Why? Because in order to attain the higher area capacity, the FAR 30, which is the first time that was granted in recent history to a tall building, we had to show that we could bring more light and air to the street. And the taper helps us to achieve that. Then architecturally, the stone box, the Roman bath-like building of Grand Central, it was built in 1913. 100 years later, we create a building that's complementary to that structure. And we say it'll be complementary not by mimicking Grand Central, but by complementing it as a glass lantern next to a stone box. That means it will feel welcoming, it will draw people, and then you could see behind me also a very dramatic diagonal angle. That was especially designed and constructed to allow the city dweller to see a new view of Grand Central Station that had been covered up for the past 100 years. This is critical to showing the respect for the old historical structure and creating a very dynamic urban form. Schedule is important. We measure everything. Every metric related to this building, whether it's the concrete, the structural steel, the curtain wall, uh, each and every aspect of this project down to the leasing is coordinated on a weekly basis. And what you see is that we're six weeks ahead of schedule and under budget. And that doesn't happen if you just get together to budget and reforecast once or twice a year. It has to happen every week 
across all departments, all disciplines, all contractors, vendors, partners that are involved. 